Hi, thanks for watching this video and thanks for using OurChurch.com's WPEZ website builder. It's WordPress made easy. In this video, I want to show you how to create a new page from scratch using the page builder that is a new feature in WPEZ 2.0. All right, so if we want to add a new page, we go to our WPEZ dashboard and we go under pages to add new. And you'll notice how in this view it looks just like the original WPEZ with the text editor. So what we want to do is start by clicking the page builder button. And the page builder will ask us if we want to use one of the predefined page templates that we have here. These are the page templates that we have developed specifically for this theme. Um, we're using the drag and drop church theme, and it's got page templates for the about page, connect, contact, give, home, and news pages. But um, And I highly encourage you to use those when applicable. But let's say you want to create a page on your website that is not one of these types of pages. Um, and we have to start from scratch. So to do that, we hit the blank option to get started. All right. Now, when creating uh, content for a page using the page builder, it's important to think in uh, in grid concepts, let's say. So first we have to think about um, our rows and then we think about our columns. So you can see here it says drop a row layout or module to get started. So you'll see here where we've got row layouts and if we click on the down arrow we've got options for however many columns we want to have and some sidebar options too. So let's say we want to start by having a uh, a welcome uh, heading on the page. So that's going to span the whole page, which means we just need one column. So I'm going to take this, click on it, and drag it in here. All right, and so now we have our row here, and since it's only got one column, there's one box for it. So the next thing that we do is we then determine what type of module we're going to put in that column. In this case, we said we were going to do a heading, so let's drag heading into this box. All right, and then we put in our heading, the text, and we have some options here to, um, if we want to center it, maybe we want to make it a little bit bigger, and change the font, all those kinds of things, and then we're going to save it. So here's our heading on our page. Now let's say we want to add a, a text area that's going to also span the whole width of the page. If we want to do that, we come up to Add Content. Again, we have to do a row. And that since this is going to span the entire page, we again are going to select a one column option. We're going to put that down here at the bottom. All right. Now, since we want to have text in this area, what we're going to do is we're going to drag in the text editor. So keep in mind, every time you add a row, you have to put the module that you want in that in each column that's in the row. So we're going to drag the text editor and put it in the box here. And you'll recognize this is the standard uh, text editor that you get in um, WPEZ or WordPress. So we're just going to put some text in here. If you wanted to, you could add links, uh, you could add images and do all kinds of things just like you normally would. So we're going to just leave it at that for now. Okay. Now, let's say we want to add something um, like information about a ministry where we might want text on one side and an image on the other side. So we again come up to add content. And in this case, since we're talking about um, 
two parts to our content, the text and the image, we're going to add a two column row. So you can see how that works. So we're going to put this down at the bottom. Okay. And we're going to put text on the one side. So we drag the text editor module in here. And let's say, we're just going to say some ministry. Our church has some ministry that's starting up. Here's some info about it. All right, we save. All right, so now you have our text stuff. And let's say we want to put an image to the side. We come back up to content area. We take the photo module and we drag that we got to hold down the uh, cursor while we drag it into the photo area or into that column, the right column. Now we get this pop-up. It says select photo. We're going to go to our media library and we can choose something that's in our media library. If we wanted to, we could upload a new photo from our computer. But in this case, let's just use this image and we'll select the photo and we have some options in here if there's things that we want to do with it we'll just leave it as it is now and we'll hit save all right so now let's we've got some text and we've got an image next to it let's say we want to adjust that it's just real easy if we just wanted to drag and adjust the size of things and how they are proportionate okay um, one more example here. Let's add another row. Sometimes uh, people like to have um, images um, that are calls to action for specific things. So let's say um, on your church website you wanted to add um, images that invited people to watch sermons, um, give online, um, or participate in an event. And let's say we wanted to have three of these right next to each other. So we could go to our row layouts. We could pick a three column layout and we click on that and drag it down below our content. And so let's say we're going to say something like, oh, I forgot to uh, forgot to drag in my module. So this is a good example of um, what needs to be done because we didn't put any modules in our three columns yet so let's come up and add content and let's say we're gonna put a photo here and then we'll just pick one actually let's do this and Let's say we have a new men's Bible study we want to promote. And we've got the image and we want to show the caption below the photo. And let's say we want to have a link to more information about it. And uh, we don't have a page on there now, but let's just say this was the page we wanted people to go to for more information. We could um, save the link as nope, not what we wanted to do. Let's try it again. We want to copy the link location. My mistake. And then we will link to that URL. And so we could do that in the interest of time. I'm not going to do it, but we could save, we could put another one on here for that would link to our online giving page, another one to our sermons page. Um, but in the interest of time, um, I'm not going to do that. 
actually, you know what I'll do real quick? I'll just put the images here so that, oh, and again, I forgot to do the module, drag the module, but I'll put the images in here so it looks a little bit better. But um, we'll get photo, and let's say we wanted to use this image to listen to sermons online. And we'll add another image. Uh -oh. Keep forgetting to drag the module in. And let's see. We don't really have a good one for this, but let's just say we want to add give online. All right, so we're all done here, and I'm going to hit done. Publish changes. And when you do that, it takes you to the page. And you can now see that we have added our test page. And this is what it looks like. And anytime you uh, want to, um, you, to edit it, you just come to your page and hit Page Builder. And you can edit the page. Now, one thing I will mention is that um, the uh, is that sometimes it can be hard to read when you have lots of rows um, and they all have the same background. So you'll notice that, for example, on the About page, that we have background image behind this, and it's white behind this section, and a background image behind this. And that kind of breaks up the sections and makes it easier to read and more attractive. You can see that we, on the Connect page, we did that with different colored backgrounds to help break things up. And so that's another thing that you might want to do, but um, this video is long enough, so I'll create another video that shows you how to set the background and do the parallax where the image moves behind it. We'll do that in another video. So thanks for watching.